Today, I'm going to talk about some techniques for tuning disjunction queries. That is to say, queries where you have multiple filter predicates that are combined with the OR operator. Alternatively, an in-list filter. Now, a particular issue with disjunction filters is that B tree indexes are often of little or no use. For example, consider a simple query in the Scott schema. First, I'll enable the auto trace facility so that we can see what's going on. And now my query. Select ename job depth no from emp, where job equals president or depth no equals 10. Back come three rows. And it's a full table scan. And there is no option for that at this point. Can I perhaps optimize the query by creating a couple of indexes? I'll create one on the job column of emp, create index ji on emp job, and another on depthno. Run the query again, and it's exactly the same. The indexes weren't used. What do I try to hint it? Like this, select slash star plus index hinting the use of the DI, the department index. Still does a full table scan. And the hint report down here tells me that the hint passed correctly, but wasn't used. Why not? Because it's actually logically impossible to use either index. A conjunction query would be fine. For example, conjunction. If I select where job equals president and depth no equals 10, then it works. We can search the index to retrieve three rows. We can then inspect the three rows, throw away two of them, and we're left with just the one. But that doesn't work with disjunction. With disjunction, we have to potentially add rows not remove them. Of course, a composite index across both columns might help. But once you start creating composite indexes like that, well, it could be the beginning of the slippery path towards a ludicrous multiplicity of indexes as you generate indexes that are suitable for exactly one query. Bitmap indexes would also be a possibility but for them, well, you need enterprise edition licenses, and you also have to accept the risk of excessive row locking, which many sites can't do. So all too often, with a disjunction query, full scans are what you end up with. So what can we do about this? Well, there are some hints that can help if you are permitted to use hints in production code. First, use concat. So I take my query, select ename job depth no from emperor job equals president or depth no equals 10, and insert slash star plus use concat. The use concat hint. Back come the three rows and look at the plan. Both indexes were used. The concatenation operator has split the query into two subqueries, one applying the filter job equals president, the other applying the filter depth equals 10, and combined the two result sets. Uh, I note the cost is four Whereas with the scan, if any of you noticed, was actually three. So the cost has actually gone up. Uh, don't worry about that. We're dealing with such tiny row sets that the cost is really meaningless. It's the rewrite that has made the search indexable and avoided the need for the full scan. 
that is important. In the later releases of the database, there's a new hint. That is or expand. So we'll see the effects of that. The or expansion hint. And on the surface, it looks pretty similar to the use concat. The query has been broken up into two subqueries. But instead of concatenation, we have union all to construct a view. Now, there's actually more going on than you might think with or expand. There are two particular extra optimizations that come in. First, further rewrites of the subqueries here are possible. Not in this case such a simple query, but a more complex query, Oracle could continue to optimize each of these subqueries, which it can't do with the older use cat. Secondly, if you're using enterprise edition licenses and have parallel query enabled, it is possible for the two branches of the union all to run concurrently, which can give you significant performance enhancements. If you go to my Oracle support, though, and look it up, you'll find there are quite a few bugs reported for or expand, even in the latest releases of the database. So be sure to test your code if you go for it. Lastly, we have the index combine hint. which I do need to give the table name for. And that is pretty cool. So I mentioned before that bitmap indexes might be useful. Well, what this hint has done is it has forced Oracle to generate bitmaps and merge them dynamically from the two B tree indexes. Now, these rewrites that we see here are, in fact, costed rewrites. So theoretically, you wouldn't need to hint them. Theoretically, the optimizer will do them automatically if they make sense. In practice, however, particularly for more complex queries, that may well not happen, and the optimizer will need a bit of help from you, the developer. So let's try tuning the SQL. First, the full outer inclusive join approach. Select d.ename, d.jog, d.depto from, and then I've got two subqueries with the full outer join between them. I'm selecting the columns from M where job equals president, full outer join to selecting the columns where adaption equals 10, and there's my join column, the AMP node, the primary key. What it's doing is here it is generating a row set of all the presidents, then here it is generating a row set of everyone in department 10, hash join, hash full outer join to construct the final result set. I said here that ANSI syntax is required. Now you could probably do it with Oracle native join syntax, but it would be pretty horrible. But that's a reasonable solution, the full outer inclusive join. 
union is also a possibility. So select ename job depth snow from emp job equals president. Union, select ename job depth snow from emp where depth snow equals 10. And we see the two branches of the union all. The first branch gets the president, the second branch gets department 10. Concatenate the result sets and then remove the duplicates. We have to do that because there's actually an example here. Mr. King is both a president and he's in department 10. So King will in fact have been selected by that branch and by that branch. So a simple union all would include him twice. Hence the need for sort unique, a distinct, to get rid of the duplicates. It appears to work, but it's a bug. It is a bug. We need to get rid of the duplicates king, yes. But unfortunately, what if there were a legitimate duplicate? Two people with the same name and the same job in the same department. Unlikely, maybe. But union would throw one of them away. So the real solution is actually union all. As this example here. Select ename job depth no from emperor job equals president. Union all. Select ename job depth no from emperor depth no equals 10. And job not equal to president. So rather than relying on the crude distinct to get rid of all duplicates, we explicitly exclude anyone who was already selected in the first branch. So that's the bug free version. Of course, your predicates have to be a bit more complex than otherwise. Uh, note also the cost has gone down. You're saving the CPU you needed through the sort unique to remove the duplicates. So that's two solutions. Rewrite, full out inclusive join, or union all. And there are some other variations as well. To conclude, whenever you see a disjunction query, one that uses or or an in list in the filters, be aware that index usage may be suppressed. The optimizer will do its best to rewrite such queries to enable index access paths, but it often can't manage to do it. So perhaps you need to give it a hand. Rewrite the SQL yourself. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.